So the two elements I would say in entertaining, in making a drawing entertaining, are uh, empathy and curiosity. So the, I mean, the worst thing you can do with a drawing is make it predictable, make it boring. Um, if there's no surprise, then uh, there's there's no um, there's no entertainment value. So a few things I want to touch touch on with that. First is you should start with the common. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is uh, think about the common traits that we all share, common things that we see in ourselves that other characters feel, common situations we can all relate to. And then you use those as a springboard for your pose. And then you try and think, how can I put a twist on this and how can I make it feel differently? Feel a little different and feel a little fresh, uh, but still be relatable. And one great way to do that is to just think about, you know, what if... Uh, just sit there and brainstorm for a little bit before you draw. Just stop and think. What if this happened? What if that happened? What if this situation? What if that? And uh, uh, this is probably actually the most important question you can ask yourself when you're drawing. Uh, in this in this case, here's a quick sketch of um, uh, I did of just thinking about insomnia one night when I couldn't sleep. And I was thinking about, you know, people say to count sheep all the time. What if you have these sheep that you're counting every night and the person's got insomnia and they can't sleep? You know, what do the sheep do? And so I just started thinking, you know, what if the sheep were real? And what if the person couldn't sleep? You know, what kind of things would they do to pass their time? Um, here's another example of, uh, you know, Santa Claus on a joyride. You know, what, what does he do in the other 364 days a year? What, what does he do to pass his time? You know, what if he just takes the sled out for a spin? What would that be like? And I'm sure if I thought about it some more, I could probably come up with a whole story or a whole scene on maybe some interactions of some fun things that he could do while he's out for a joyride. But I'm trying to take a common idea and think of it a little differently. Another way to make things entertaining is to think about conflict. Uh, as any writer will tell you, you know, drama comes from conflict. So uh, when you've got characters that just sail through life and they get everything that they want and, and nothing bad happens to them, that's a boring story. That's going to get boring really fast. If you want your characters to be entertaining, you've got to give them challenges to face and steep obstacles to overcome. And uh, by conflict, I don't necessarily mean a fight with another person. It can really be any frustration or an obstacle. Uh, but the most, the most obvious type of conflict is with other people, but you can have conflict in other ways as well. A few examples real quick. You can have a character who's caught in a lie. You know, how do they, that's, that's a conflict, that's a tension. Like, okay, I think I've been caught in my lie. How do I behave? Do I want to keep up the lie? Do I want to not, uh, do I want to try and, uh, <clears throat> do I want to fess up to it? How do you behave? You know, think about poses that you could get out of a situation like that. Or uh, what if they're trying to hide from a bad guy? There's a situation, it's conflict. Um, losing an argument. You know, you're in an argument, you're in a fight, and you can tell that you're losing. How do you start to act and behave? Um, maybe you can face a, a broken machine. Uh, here's an example, a sketch I did of a guy with a vending machine that took his money. That's a, an example of a situation of a conflict with a prop, with an inanimate object. <clears throat> and that's actually quite common, uh, quite a common type of conflict. Uh, in the Pose Drawing Spark book, I've got a hundred uh, props in the list that you can use to play around with and try and come up with situations, and a lot of them have conflict built into them. Uh, for example, uh, here's a scene from a public domain cartoon of Popeye and it's roller skates. They did a whole cartoon called A Date to Skate. And look at the poses that they get out of it. Look at how Popeye is confident and he's, you know, he knows what he's doing with the skates and he's behaving one way. And then watch Olive as she's flopping around and trying to make her own uh, way as she uh, tries to get used to learning how to skate. Which if you've ever had to learn how to skate, you know how difficult that can be. And so be look, thinking about props and conflict and how you can be um, adding conflict to your characters can... Uh, make your drawings more entertaining. Uh, another thing to take that to the next level is a concept called uh, the personal hell. And uh, there's a great writing book by a guy named Brian McDonald called Invisible Ink. And uh, he's got a ton of great ideas about how to make really good entertaining stories. And he's, he gives lectures and workshops and he's even spoken at Pixar. And he really knows this stuff. He's got a terrific blog. Uh, I think it's just called the Invisible Ink blog. And anyway, he has this concept. I don't know if he originated it or not, but um, the idea is that of a personal hell. Which, and the, the idea is that you take, um, take a character and then think about what is the worst possible situation that that character would want to be in. What's the last place they would want to be? And then put your character in that situation and that will give you a, something ripe for storytelling scenarios. I'll give you a few. There's a very common technique actually. I'll give you a few examples real quick of movies that do that. Groundhog Day. Bill Murray is this ambitious, you know, egotistical weatherman who doesn't like people. He thinks about nothing but himself and advancing his career. And what happens? He gets stuck for eternity in a, a small, dinky town where he has to relive the same day over and over and over with people that he hates. And by putting him in that personal hell situation, he eventually has to learn to grow and become a better person. Um, finding Nemo. What do you got? You got the father who's just overprotective. Uh, he's lost his wife and his other kids, and so he doesn't want his last son to get hurt, and so he's overprotective. And what's the thing that happens? This one son that, that he's constantly watching like a hawk gets stolen by some divers. 
and he has to go chase him down. So that the, the thing that he feared the most is the thing that actually happens, and that's his personal hell. And by uh, that's the starting point of his growth as a character, learning how to let go as a parent. Um, Toy Story. Woody enjoys being Andy's favorite toy until one day what shows up? A, a spaceman who's fancy and cool and got all these gadgets. And suddenly Woody, who is used to being the king of the mountain, is suddenly just kind of cast aside. It's his personal hell. Um, another despicable me. You've got an ambitious supervillain who wants to steal the moon and he wants to you know, become the greatest supervillain ever. And what is, happens to him? He gets stuck uh, having to be a parent and raise these three kids, these three, three sweet little girls. And so what happens when you've got a supervillain who's put in that situation? It's probably the last thing he wants to do. So thinking about the personal hell concept can really give you some great resources and ideas for um, putting storytelling value into your drawings. Uh, another thing to think about is humor. You know, uh, what makes something uh, unique can also often make it funny. So um, you want to be um, uh, thinking about, again, going back to the unexpected. A lot of what's humorous often comes from stuff that's just unexpected. Oh, I didn't expect that to happen. It makes you just kind of chuckle. So um, uh, if, you, if you have a good sense of humor and you can incorporate it into your drawings, you, it'll take you a long way towards making, uh, making funny uh, sketches and making things more entertaining. You know, and, and a lot of humor is just based on, uh, based on things going wrong. Um, what is I can't remember how it goes exactly, but there's a, there's a, um, some famous comedian, it might have been Mel Brooks, said that, uh, you know, tragedy is when I fall on a banana peel and break my back, and comedy is when you do it. You know, something like that. When, when bad things happen to other people, it can be a funny situation. Um, and, and again, that kind of ties into the whole idea of conflict. Conflict and humor are, are very closely related. related. Um, uh, and then another example of uh, creating entertaining situations, another thing you can try, is the technique that's called uh, the fish out of water, or just thinking about opposites. Um, taking a character that would normally be in one situation and putting him in a totally opposite situation from where he'd like to be. Um, and it's sort of the, like the personal hell, but not necessarily. Not, it's not necessarily a negative thing. It's just something that's radically different. Uh, some examples would be in, uh, in Frozen, uh, the movie Frozen, where you've got Olaf the snowman. You know, he's a snowman, but what does he dream about? What is his fantasy? His fantasy is to enjoy summer, even though he's a snowman. That's, he'd love to be in summer. There's a really funny sequence where he's singing about how great it would be to be a snowman in summer. And because that's such a unique idea and it's a total fish-out-of-water situation, um, it's really entertaining. You think about Aladdin. You know, you've got this street urchin who, who wants to become a royal prince. And so um, that's a fish out of water. Once he becomes royalty, he doesn't necessarily know how to handle it. And so uh, that's a really great uh, example for uh, fodder for all kinds of scene, story scene situations. Um, Tarzan, you've got a human who's living among animals. Um, another example would be Kung Fu Panda. You've got this fat, out of shape fanboy who you know, gets to become a warrior. Um, how, to train your dra how to Train Your Dragon. They've got this scrawny, kind of artistic kid who's living among all these big, tough Vikings, and he's, he feels like a fish out of water. He feels like he doesn't fit in. Um, the Incredibles is another example, taking superheroes and transplanting them into suburbia where they have to just live these bland, nor more bland boring lives. So think about the fish out of water. Think about a character, and where could you put them that would uh, uh, be the last place that they would normally picture themselves? And think about the things as opposites, and that can really uh, give you some great situations for drawing as well. And then finally, I want to talk about pathos. Um, pathos is uh, basically it's, uh, uh, the idea of just appealing to emotions and tugging at the heartstrings. It's the idea that, um, you know, the, of creating tears and, and sadness a little bit in the, in the characters in your stories. Uh, and a lot of people shy away from that because you don't want to be depressing, you don't want to be maudlin. But uh, Walt Disney say that uh, for every laugh in your story, there should be a tear. There should, there's something about when bad things happen to your characters that makes them feel... Um, uh, more authentic and more sincere and more real. Um, think about, um, uh, and a lot of times it, it can help the audience relate to the character and feel more empathy toward him. Um, you think about Snow White. Uh, think about what happens in that story. At one point, you know, we all get attached to Snow White and then she dies. And it's a really beautiful moving scene where you've got all these dwarves and each one is crying in their own way, but yet it's very sincere. And, it, and it's, you even get a little choked up as an audience member watching it. Um, Finding Nemo has that barracuda attack at the beginning. Uh, it starts out at a very tragic note where this barracuda eats the, uh, the fish's wife and all of his kids except one. Um, movie Up, probably the best example would be Up. You know, there's that scene uh, about 20 minutes into the movie where it's the married life sequence where you see them, the couple get married and go through learning they can't have a child and then uh, living their whole lives together and trying to save up for unfulfilled dreams and then the wife dies. It's a very, it's a very um, pathos-heavy moment and uh, there's not a word of dialogue spoken in that whole five-minute sequence, but yet... Uh, practically everybody in the audience that sees it is brought to tears. 
Let me think about um, Spider-Man, or you know, or Batman, who are characters that are motivated by, by tragedy. You know, they're, they're, Spider-Man's Uncle Ben dies, or Batman's parents get shot. So, putting an element of tragedy into your stories can uh, really help bring some emotion out of it. It can also um, help push you and challenge you to think about more, uh, more entertaining ways to draw your characters. Uh, really quickly, I want to show you um, a video here in a second. That's um, uh, a, an actual video from uh, footage that was taken during World, right after World War II. Um, when the Nazi concentration camps were discovered to be as horrible as they really were, uh, what, what the government did was they took the people that lived in the towns that had been surrounding the concentration camps and they brought them in to show them what had really been happening. And you can see, I'll show you this video, you can see um, as the people are coming into the concentration camp, they're feeling very, um, uh, they're feeling very uh, happy and kind of like, oh, we're going to go on a little tour and see what this is. And uh, they're kind of chipper and upbeat. And then once they get in and start... Uh, seeing what was really going on practically in their backyard that they didn't even realize um, there's shock and there's horror and people um, are you can tell that it's just a total turnaround and I, I put this video in there to just show how powerful it can be when your characters have a range of emotion and uh, expression and they go from uh, from across the spectrum from happy to sad if you if you don't make your characters flat but you give them uh, that em all those emotions to play off of um, you can come up with a lot better poses and a lot more entertaining drawings Thank you.